Hey, how's it going? Today we're going to look at everyone's favorite Generation 1 jellyfish. Can it succumb to the heat or will it keep its tentacool? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, when I'm doing runs, I look for candidates that will do well and there are pretty much three boxes to check that a Pokemon needs to see if it'll have a great run. Uh, number one is what is its special stat? Well, tentacool has a massive special stat of 100, so it clearly jumps that hurdle. I mean, we just did a Krabby run, and it has 25 special, so this is filet mignon after eating a microwaved hot dog in comparison. Number two, the speed stat. Tentacruel has a pretty surprisingly high speed stat of 70, which I do believe is almost double of any of the red or blue Pokemon we've done up to this point. And number three, what's the move pool looking like? Well, the level up learn set is uninspired, acid and supersonic looks pretty weak for Brock, but it does learn rap at a pretty early level of 13. Its TM listing is pretty solid though. You have Surf, Ice Beam, and Mega Drain to take full advantage of that beefy special stat. It also learns Barrier and Swords Dance for two moves that can take advantage of badge boosting. So without making this too long winded, why hasn't any of the big channels out there done a Generation 1 Tentacle run? Am I missing something, or is this a dark horse Pokemon that's overlooked like Bellsprout that they just haven't touched and are just kind of riding it off? My pre-run thoughts before I actually begin playing is that Brock will not be fun, but if the last two Sandshrew and Krabby runs have taught me anything, is that you don't need to have 13 minute Brock completion times to get a pretty elite level time. I'm feeling pretty great heading into the tentacle run, and I'm thinking that this one can easily be sub 5 hours, if not even better. But before we jump in, if you enjoy this content, feel free to subscribe, hit that bell, and leave a comment. It's the only way I'll ever break free of the YouTube algorithm and get more than 100 views on each of my videos. Help, please. Let's get to it. As we go to the beginning, I'll mention that I do reset for good Pokemon. Uh, I don't want anything great. In this case, I just want a tentacle that has decent uh, special and decent speed, just so I can have a good representation of what it can actually do. Outside of that, I always don't state the rules, but they are simple. No items in battle, I can only use tentacle, no use of glitches, skips, or exploits outside of the badge boost, and no saving between Elite Four members. Anyways. I easily beat the first rival, and I battle the optional trainers in Viridian Forest, and I end up going to fight Brock at level 8 just to see, and it goes pretty awful. I don't even try more than once, I just I get slapped back to reality and I, I know I have to grind. So off to Viridian Forest I go. I also pick up the optional rival 1A to the left of Viridian. It wasn't too bad, he only has two Pokemon. And if you don't get dunked in sand, acid is sufficient enough to get this one done. Eventually I grind up to level 13 and I get wrapped and I talked about wrapped in the bell spout run and suffice it to say that it is a busted move if you outspeed a Pokemon and I do in this case. The strategy here with Brock is that you confuse the Geodude with Supersonic which is a 55% accuracy and pretty awful but you want to use some acids at least until it uses defense curls because you see in generation 1 moves that are double resisted like acid to the geodude can actually do zero damage and the game will say that it missed when in fact it's doing zero damage. Essentially you hope to get it to hurt itself a few times and then you switch into the wrap so that you can make sure you have enough PP left for Onyx. Onyx is the less challenging of the two. I messed around with confusing it and using Acid, but Rap is much more reliable and superior in every way. This fight does take me a few times to get past, but it wasn't some monumentally impossible task. I do, however, think that it'll be one of Tentacle's biggest humps in the run, so it's nice that we didn't have to grind forever and made it, made it pass pretty efficiently. After that, it's onwards to Mount Moon. And here we get to pick up Water Gun, which is pretty great. I also get blessed with a Floor 1 Paris encounter for our HM needs, and it's rare enough to make me think that this run could potentially be magical. Just like with Krabby, I do challenge most of the trainers in the area. Hikers and Wild Geodudes are specifically juicy free experience, since we have a water move now to take advantage of our special. Outside of that, it's nothing special and we eventually make our way over to Cerulean. I go straight to the gym and I jump into Misty at level 20. I try several times, but it's just not happening at this point. 
I don't outspeed any of your Pokemon. I get chipped down by the star you, and by the time I make it to the star me, I go down every single time. I do get close this specific attempt I'm showing, like really, really close, but I do opt to just move on and come back later when it's a little bit more consistent. So now it's time for rival number two, and this fight just goes perfect. A turn one Pidgeotto quick attack into a critical hit water gun sets us up for success. Wrap on the next turn ensures that it will never get another attack again. Abra can't even attack, so I'm not even sure why I'm showing this footage. Rattata gets off a quick attack of its own, but even a water gun at this level is powerful enough just to one shot it with our impressive girthy special. Bulbasaur takes neutral damage from acid, but the takeaway from this is to see how little damage Bind Whip does. We know that special is both offensive and defensive, and Tentacle is very tanky is what I'm trying to say. Moving on, I will say at this point that Tentacle has a lot of PP, and with potions I'm able to pretty much mow down all the trainers on the way to Bill without going back to heal, thus saving a lot of time. At this point in the run, it's starting to feel pretty strong, but how long is that really going to last? We'll figure that out. Now, at level 23, I'm ready to revisit Misty. I want to reiterate that this fight was tough. It took me four tries to get past it. The Star U is straightforward, I outspeed it, and there's no gimmicks. I just wrap it, and it doesn't get a turn. Star Me is the tricky one, and things need to go your way. This fight is pretty reliant on luck. First you need the Supersonic to hit, and then you need Star Me to hit itself in confusion a time or two, and then you need to wrap it and not miss and chip it down until you can win, and that's the Misty fight. It's slow, and it's lucky. After that, I don't say for some reason, I'm not foreseeing any problems, but then we run into the rocket grunt that has Dig, he has a drowsy, I'm weak to psychic, it also has hypnosis, do I need to say more, I lose, and then when I reload I have to refight Misty, saying that I was annoyed would be putting it lightly. After that it's time for the SSN. Tentacool can't learn Body Slam, but I do find the gentleman guarding the rare candy instead. After that it's time for rival number 3. Now that we have Bubble Beam, we start to see the power of Tentacool come out. I outspeed Pidgeotto, which is saying something, and Bubble Beam nukes it down. Raticate meets the same fate. Kadabra has a good special stat, so it gets to play the rap game until it faints. I still don't have a great answer for Ivysaur, but Acid's neutral damage is a 3 shot. I get Leech Seeded and hit with a Vine Whip, but it still only tickles Tentacool. Keep in mind that Tentacool's secondary poison typing makes it neutral to grass, which is a feat that I think only Tentacool and its evolution can claim in Generation 1. I didn't even think about that in the run while I was playing it until I was writing the script, which is, is very important. Anyways, moving on. I get cut, and for obvious reasons we are going to skip Lieutenant Surge, although I think that Tentacle could probably do it, but I want to be smart about the run. So I pick up the bike, and after an uneventful rock tunnel, I take on rival number 4 after it felt successful to do it early in the Krabby run, so I'm going to try it again. In the first battle, it goes horrible. I get sand attacked, and followed up with a critical hit quick attack. I somehow magically hit supersonic despite the base accuracy of 55. But I go on to miss crucial raps when I needed them the most. I get bit into a dragon rage and that takes me out. The second fight does restore my shaken confidence in doing this fight early. Instead of a sand attack crit, I take a single gust. Supersonic still takes me three times to hit it on the Gyarados. But after that, I do hit some luck and it starts hurting itself. And I try multiple moves out just to see kind of what works since I won't ever have a great answer to Gyarados. But we do get past it. Growlithe might as well stay in the Pokeball. Bubble Beam sends it to the Shadow Realm. Kadabra gets the Wrap strategy again. It still doesn't get to play the game. And it gets wrapped in tentacles until it suffocates. And this time, Ivysaur shows us that if you get Leech Seated and then you try Wrap, that is an awful strategy. It will outheal the Wrap damage and it doesn't feel good at all. I swap to Acid and it's much more manageable that way. Overall, it's not a bad fight, but I did learn some useful information for later in the run. I make my way over to Celadon City and top priority is to get Ice Beam from the little girl. I immediately use the TM I replace Acid. Afterward it's time for the Rocket Hideout and that means Giovanni number 1. And as you might have guessed, High Special plus Bubble Beam is the recipe for a very easy fight and you'd be absolutely correct if you guessed that. And we'll get into this later but I make a huge mistake right here. You see above Giovanni is a hidden super potion that I always grab. And this is the position that the Sylph Code drops when you when you defeat Giovanni and you have to move to see it. Well, I forget to move and I dig down immediately at this point in the footage and for about the next two little bits, I'm blissfully unaware just how stupid I was. So after that, we go the short route through Saffron and we go back to Vermilion City to take on Surge so that I can use Fly outside of battle. And since I'm overleveled, 
the first two Pokemon go down to a single Bubble Beam. Raichu does survive one. It gets off a Thundershock, but Tentacle's amazing special just tanks it like a champ, and we knock it out on the second turn. Now that we can use Fly, it's back to the Pokemon Tower. And it's worth mentioning that I learned Barrier. Uh, I replaced the Unreliable Supersonic, and Barrier is an amazing move, and in hindsight, it's the move that I should have used over Swords Dance. The defense would have helped massively late in the run. But moving on, I get all the way to the end of the tower, and I'm usually watching something on my second monitor, so it takes me a second to realize that the, the ghost isn't turning into a Marowak. And then I get this slow realization that I didn't pick up the Sylph scope earlier. It dawned on me. Luckily, I hadn't healed since Celadon, so a dig takes me directly back there. It still cost me several in-game minutes. I'd say at least four or five, so keep that in mind when we're looking at the end score. I still can't believe that I did this. We go back, I smack the Marowak, and I pick up the Poke Flute. And at this point, I'm feeling brave. And I say to myself, let's fight Erica. And the first attempt goes, absolutely worst case scenario. While we aren't weak to grass, there's not much you can really do when you get put to sleep and then you just get razor leaf several times until you die. I thought about just moving on, but I went back to see if it was just a fluke and that turns out to be the case. Victory Bell is a two shot from Ice Beam, so if it goes for another move or misses, it's over with and that's what happens. Tangela isn't as bulky as Victory Bell and it goes down to a single hit, bye, and Bob Plume can take a hit, but just look at the pathetic damage that Mega Drain does, there was no problems here. After that, I go beat up a Snorlax, and I head down to Fuchsia City. In Tentacle's case, it makes way more sense to go ahead than go to the Safari Zone so I can get my strongest move in Surf, and I pick up the teeth while I'm there. With Surf learned, it's time to face Koga, and Koga isn't much to talk about, but for some inexplicable reason, Koga has lots of psychic jugglers littered around his gym, and it's not easy for me to keep my tentacle with all these psychic types around. But it really wasn't that bad. I didn't even really die to any of them, but they do heavy damage, especially this first Kadabra here. Perhaps I should have fought all of them for experience, but I'm trying to make up for that lost time with the Sylph Scope mishap I had earlier. In the first attempt against Koga, I had been out in the field uh, battling, so I used up all of my Surf PP without healing, and I run out on the muck. Ice Beam just isn't strong enough to finish it, and it gets some crits, and it forces me to go reset and get some more PP. The second time is just really annoying. I get smoke screened, and when I make it to the muck, it just starts minimizing, and I just shoot Koga Bird to his face, and I reset. The third time, he tries the same smoke screens earlier, and the muck does go for a minimize once again, but I hit some luck. I uh, don't miss any more serves. Weezing comes in. And I'm just kind of looking at it suspiciously, so I use Barrier because, just like I suspect, he is itching to self-destruct, and the defense easily lets us survive to pick up another badge. Nice. Now being a water type, and now that we can use Surf outside of battle, it makes sense to go ahead and visit Blaine. I fly back to Pot Town and we surf down to Cinnabar. And something I haven't mentioned is that Tentacle is one of the few Pokemon in the slow leveling group at this point, so I'm behind in levels compared to other runs. So it makes sense to battle off the easy fire trainers in Blaine's gym. And once again, I answer my favorite question. Tombstoner, brother. With my heart, but the game tells me that I'm wrong. I know I'm not. We know. We know I'm not. To save even more time for missing the Sylph scope, and since I never use all my ethers anyway, I use one on Surf to avoid going back to heal before fighting Blaine. I do actually lose the first attempt because I didn't use any badge boosting moves. I was overconfident. Rapidash and Arcanine outspeed me and they take me out with uh, normal moves. I learn from my mistake on the second attempt, I set up barriers to increase my speed via the badge boost, and I go on to one shot everything to obtain our 6 badge easy enough. And now it's time for Sylph Co. After I get the card key, I do pick up Swords Dance, and now it's time for rival number 5, usually the big antagonist in solo runs, but Tentacool does really well, so what happens? Well, Ice Beam on the Pidgeot is a one shot, no issues here, I still don't have a great answer for Gyarados, but Ice Beam does nice neutral damage. I take some damage back, 
but I don't set up early because I know that I'm going to level up, which happens after the Gyarados. Now, Growlithe comes in, and since it's essentially a break between Alakazam and Venusaur, which will both cause potential problems, I set up my three barriers on the Growlithe to ensure that I outspeed them. The Surf takes it out, then Alakazam comes in, and although it has high special, our boosted Stab Surf takes it out before it can get off a hit, and Venusaur goes down to an Ice Beam in a single hit as well, and it feels good to get one of those rare one-shots on rival number 5. After that, it's on to Giovanni number 2, and I only show the footage to keep consistent with showing all the main battles, but it's a joke. Water type, good special, against Pokemon that I outspeed, and either resist or do massive super effective damage to. Not much to see here, folks. Next up is Sabrina, and it is perhaps the only major hurdle in this run. This fight is awful. We have high special, but so does her Pokemon, meaning that we won't do a lot of damage, and they do super effective damage back to us. Overall, at the start, I do 5 tries against her initially. Kadabra is an absolute nightmare. I do outspeed it, but Surf doesn't do enough damage. I get hit with a heavy damage psychic. It gets a special drop. I take it out the next turn, move on to Mr. Mime, and I think that my only shot is to set up Swords Dance, but Sabrina's just not having it and I get knocked out with the confusion. The second attempt, I go back to the rap strategies against Kadabra, and of course, it misses. I get hit for over half my health, and eventually I get the raps needed to knock it out. Mr. Mime comes in, and I need to set up Swords Dance to outspeed the last Alakazam. I try, and I get chipped down to a measly 2 HP before knocking it out, and there's nothing I can do against Venomoth, so I go down. But notice that I level up after the Mr. Mime, and that will be a problem. I also keep going for Ice Beams. Uh, apparently, I think that the wings on Venomoth means it's a flying type, but it's not. It's also not Psychic. What's it doing on Sabrina's team? Does anyone know? Can anyone tell me why? So this goes on several times, but eventually I get the wake up call. I make it through Kadabra doing raps, I knock out the Mr. Mime and the Venomoth with ease, and I actually make it to Alakazam on full health. It outspeeds me, and it sets up Reflect, and that's awful because look how little damage Rap does with the Reflect up. Maybe I'd win if I had about 48 more turns to do this, but that's not gonna happen. Obviously it murders me with its damaging attacks and at this point I have to do something about that leveling up. And by something I mean I simply go back a room and I beat a trainer to get level 44 so that I won't level up during the fight. It's worth mentioning that even this minor trainer wasn't a cakewalk. The psychic types just do so much damage to me. And I don't have to retry or anything like that but it's just worth mentioning. So back to Sabrina we go. I start off with Surf for absolutely no reason at all against Kadabra. It survives. I take heavy damage. Then Mr. Mime hits me with the confusion, and I hit myself, and the battle is over. The next attempt, I wisen up, and I wrap the Kadabra to avoid damage, but Mr. Mime decides that it wants to be the luckiest Pokemon in Kanto by getting a critical hit confusion, and also confusing me, and me hurting myself in the confusion. Good job. The very next battle, Mr. Mime cooperates slightly, I do take a confusion, but he's he's mostly a good guy. I'm able to set up Sword Stance, and this one is in the bag, right? Well, the definitely not flying type Venomoth doesn't think so. I start off with Wrap, and it's doing some impressive damage, so I'm not even worried at this point. And here's my mistake. I use Wrap at the end instead of just finishing it off with anything. The Wrap misses, I get paralyzed, I go for a Wrap, it gets a Hyper Potion, a couple of turns later, I get hit with a critical hit leech life, and I just reset out of frustration, and this battle's driving me up the wall at this point. And we finally put together a battle. We set up Swords Dance on the Mr. Mom, I make it to Venomoth with full HP, I don't know why I didn't do raps, but I go for Surf, but it kills it in one hit. I definitely overthought this one last time. And finally, after nearly a dozen tries, we get to see the fabled Alakazam, but I outspeed it. And with three swords dance, look how trivial it is. A single cycle of wraps is enough to take it out. And that's the hardest battle down. Up to this point anyway. Who knows what the future will hold, but for now, that seven badges down. And we know that Giovanni number three is always the easiest version of Giovanni, in my opinion. And you know I'm gonna steamroll it, so instead I'll let it play in the background and we'll talk a little bit about the run. I do fight the optional trainers in the gym, since the slow leveling group means I feel behind and I don't want to be level 45 going into the Elite Four. Honestly, depending on how rival number six goes, I might feel pretty confident with the Elite Four. Lorelai is a good matchup, and this time growls won't matter since I'm using a special. Agatha won't be as bad as Krabby. I have ice moves for Lance, and we just gotta see how the champion fight will go 
coming up. So let's jump into rival number six. And before I go into the fight, I replaced rap with Mega Drain. I figured it could have its uses and we'll see how it goes, but the coverage of a water, ice, and grass move with a speed increasing badge boosting conduit has me feeling pretty good about the moveset. The Pidgeot barely survives an ice beam. I finish it off with a Mega Drain, Rhyhorn comes in, and it's double weight to surf, it goes down. Since Gyarados is water, flying type, I still don't have a great answer. I set up Swords Dance, and look how puny the damage is from Mega Drain. It's got 40 base power, it's not that great. Luckily, it goes for several Leers, which also increase my badge boost. It doesn't heal up, and we're able to take it out without taking anything really outside of one Dragon Breath. Growlithe is next up, and I set up one more Swords Dance to be cautious with my speed, and a Surf promptly takes it out next turn. Up next is the Alakazam, and since I no longer have Wrap, I have to use special moves against it. Surf does a lot of damage, and it can't one hit it, and it does heavy psychic super effective damage back. Then the worst thing that can happen, that always seems to happen to me, is that I level up and I lose my extra badge boost going into the Venusaur, and it can tank an Ice Beam since I leveled up, and it goes for a Vine Whip, but since it's only neutral damage, it can't knock me out even though I'm at 33 health. The following turn, I seal the deal. Honestly, this fight does have some hiccups and caveats in it. Alakazam is the biggest threat, and it'll more than likely always be a threat, and it can just hit with a crit psychic and knock me down from 100% health. Uh, Venusaur also might be a problem. It can go for Razor Leaf, 100% chance to crit. It'll do pretty heavy neutral damage. It just means those are the those are probably going to be the two biggest things I got to watch out for. They need to be in the back of my head as I go through the Elite Four. Victory Road is uneventful. I do battle several trainers on my way. Although I think in this run I probably should have just skipped everything because Tentacle has been pretty impressive, but I guess at the time I wanted to spend a few minutes just shoring up my experience, but overall the trainers didn't pose much of a challenge like they did with Sandshrew for example, and it was a pretty easy time. So I'm going to start off the Elite Four here by showing a stupid mistake. My first attempt, I made it past Lorelei, I made it past Bruno. When I was using Rare Candies for Agatha, my B button just decided not to work and I evolved Tentacle into Tentacruel. So I'm just staring at my game knowing that I have to reset. Someone should make the Pokemon randomizer have an option to not have your Pokemon evolve specifically for solo runs. Someone get on it. Anyway, on to the strategies. For Lorelei, you do need to use a rare candy to reset your experience because it becomes fairly consistent when you don't have to worry about losing your badge boost. I don't think I lost to Lorelei once in all of my attempts this run. Starting off with a Dugong, you have to set up Swords Dance to make sure your moves do just enough damage to outpace the rest. When you finally set them up, hit it with an Ice Beam or something like that, it'll use rest, it'll go to sleep. Then you have three turns to knock it out with Mega Drain, and at this level with Sword Stance, it's really consistent. Next up is Cloyster, and two Surfs will knock it out. In this battle, I do get a crit, but it doesn't matter. Two would have still done it without it. It can potentially be annoying with Supersonic, but Spike Cannon doesn't do that much, and it's a non-issue on this time. Next up is Slowbro. Amnesia is super annoying. I suggest not doing Mega Drain, although it is super effective against it, but it's just so weak. Resistive Surf do decent enough damage, and if you can get a crit like I do, it's really just a matter of patience before you make it to the Jinx. And Jinx is probably the easiest Pokemon of the bunch. Uh, Ice does not resist water, so Surf does pretty heavy damage. You can take it out in two hits. Lapras though, Lapras is a tanky boy. It can be annoying. Body Slams do a decent chunk of damage, but Mega Drains can offset most of it. Most battles you won't have enough PP to use Mega Drain the entire fight, but you can just outpace it with any move. I never really seen it use Confuse Ray, but I think the fight would be a lot more challenging if it did. Uh, Body Slam can also paralyze you, or it can just get massive crits. But with Mega Drain, I never found myself worrying too much. And that's the Laura Lee fight. There's not much to it. Very consistent. We're moving on. Now we're up to Bruno, and I'm not going to give you a huge play-by-play -play here. Everything goes down in a single serve. I did set up some Swords Dance on the last Onyx. It crit me, I get a Generation 1 miss, and then I get hit again to go down to about 60 health. Watching the footage back, I don't know why I just didn't do a Mega Drain to get my lost health back, because I almost lost this last battle here. My champ comes in, I go for a Mega Drain on him for some reason, I don't know why. I get hit with a submission and it had me sweating just a little bit, especially when I had another generation 1 miss and by that, if you don't know, generation 1 has a 1 in 256 chance to miss 100% accuracy moves. It's very rare 
and we get blessed to see two in a row here, but ultimately a surf is enough to avoid any catastrophes unlike in the Krabby run, and don't mention the Krabby Bruno losses in the comment section or I'll be upset. Next up is Agatha, and the first trainer that takes more than one attempt. I use all but two of my rare candies and we fight her at level 61, and to my surprise that's enough to outspeed all of her Pokemon except for the last Gengar. The first attempt is alright, two surfs for the Gengar, Ice Beam for the Golbat, two surfs for the Haunter, and then I set up Swords Dance on Arbok, but I take too much damage from the Arbok. Agatha swaps around and a lingering Confuse Ray ultimately takes me out. Overall not a bad first attempt. The second attempt looks nearly identical. I take a Nightshade before knocking out Gengar. Golbat gets one shot, Haunter takes two, but this time I set up again on the Arbok and I go for Mega Drain to desperately try to get back some of my lost health, but by the time I realize I'm not going to outpace it, it's too late. A critical hit forces another reset. And eventually this fight turns out to be more or less consistent once I stopped trying to set up on the Arbok. But there were some outliers like this clip where I hurt myself every single turn against the final Gengar and it finishes me off with the Nightshade. Then there's also some times like this where the Arbok can just paralyze you and put you in a position where almost anything that the last Gengar wants to do can kill you. But at the end of the day, Agatha was about middle of the road. Wasn't really overly difficult, but it wasn't a cakewalk either. By the end, I feel like I got it down to where I could beat her almost every time. And for the final battle, it went like this. Two Surfs will take out the Gengar. It goes for a Nightshade between, which is a decent amount of damage, but it'll be okay. Golbat is a one hit with Ice Beam. Haunter takes two hits as well to go down. It misses a Hypnosis between the two Surfs. Arbok is actually a range. Sometimes you'll take it out in one hit, sometimes you don't. Here, we don't. It does hit me with an Acid for some chip damage but we take it out on the next turn. And at this point, I'm convinced that the last Gengar has to have the worst AI out of any Pokemon in the entire Elite Four. It seemingly just picks moves at random. So I hit it with a Surf, and it just goes for a Toxic, although it doesn't affect Poison types. And the next turn, I just knock it out with a Surf. And this is how the majority of the Agatha fights went, but I figured I'd show the losses like I usually do. Next up is Lance. And this fight was easier than Agatha. I'd go as far to say that this fight is really easy with the one caveat of if you can get past Gyarados easy, which we're about to see at times was a monumental task. The first attempt, I want to set up Swords Dance, but by the time I set up two, I've already taken two Dragon's Breaths for 80 HP. And by the time I try to go for the offensive, uh, Hyper Beam just knocks me out. The next loss, I make it all the way to the Aerodactyl, and I make a huge mistake, and I'll talk about the trivial nature of this fight later, but just know that I should have set up Swords Dance on Dragonair, and I would have made it past this no problem. But I didn't, I'm outsped by the Aerodactyl, and I take a bite, and it forces a reset. Normally I don't mind losing, but I absolutely hate losing when I just make stupid decisions. Another way to lose this fight is the ever so popular turn 1 critical hit hyper beam that just fills my heart with joy. And just to make sure I feel that joy deep inside my heart, the very next attempt gives me another heaping portion of it. Mm -mm. The joy is swelling in my heart, Lance. There's also the slightly less filled with joy play where Gyarados will do a leer, lower your defense, and that makes it to where a non-critical hit hyper beam is just enough to knock you out. I'm not really filled with as much joy, but this is exhibit one of why Barrier would have been a better choice than Swords Dance in my opinion, and it would have made this fight a lot less frustrating. And finally, we'll see the last Lance battle, and you'll see that even a regular Hyper Beam does about three quarters of my health, and once again Barrier would have helped out a lot here. Ice Beam turns out to be the best moves with the neutral damage to a Water Flying type, but I actually go down to 9 HP in this final battle, and I almost make the same mistake I did in the earlier Aerodactyl death attempt, and I immediately ice beam the Dragonair. You should always set up and do what really whatever you want to do against Lance if you're using a poison type, because uh, the dragons will always use agility on you every single turn. Thankfully, I come to my senses, and I fully set up on the next Dragonair so that I can outspeed the Aerodactyl. I make a slightly less mistake right here. I should have used Mega Drain just to get my health back up for insurance, but it turned out not to matter since I outspeed the Aerodactyl, Surf demolishes it, and the Dragonite is times two weak to ice, and it wouldn't hit me even if I missed every single hit because it has the same AI and it would just spam 
psychic quote unquote super effective moves, but we get past Lance. Last up is the champion battle, and it was a slog to think of strategies, with how many times I have to start over from the beginning, and how many times I'd either run into some bad luck with Agatha, or maybe the Gyarados would just act a fool on me, uh, making it here wasn't always easy. So my first attempt, I'm bright-eyed, I'm bushy-tailed, I'm gonna take this one home, mama, we're gonna be the champion of Pallet Town, here we come. I sit up, and I easily knock out the Pidgeot with an Ice Beam, and in comes Alakazam. I get hit with a Psy Beam for massive damage, and a Surf can't knock it out, and I get cleaned up with a Psychic, and we're gonna have a problem here. The very next attempt, Pidgeot decides that it wants to act up. It does a real number on me, and I try to stem the bleeding with some Mega Drains, but it just keeps critting me until I have to pull the trigger on the Ice Beam to get rid of it. And this puts me in a position where I only have 26 HP going against the Alakazam, and we know how that's going to end. The next attempt, Psychic, critical hit. Wow, what can you do? The fourth attempt, I do a measly Mega Drain for some unknown brain dead reason against the Alakazam, and then after that I get the ultimate luck. It uses Reflect. It uses Reflect. I hit a Surf, and it's not enough damage. If I would have just used two Surfs in a roll, I would have made it past it. But I used the Mega Drain for no reason at all. And of course, after that, it promptly crits me back to the Shadow Realm. Go home. Think of your poor move choices. Ouch. Finally, we get our time in the spotlight. Pidgeot does a tiny bit of damage to us, but it's nothing major. I do fully set up Swords Dance on it. I knock it out with an Ice Beam. Now it's time for the arch nemesis of the entire run's turn. I hit a turn one serve. I do heavy damage, but not enough to knock it out. It uses psychic, and the writing is on the wall, but wait, it doesn't crit, and I survive with 41 HP. This allows me to hit another serve and move past the raid boss. But can we take advantage of this? Can we bring home the win? Rhydon comes in, and the use of Mega Drain on the final moveset finally pays huge dividends here, more than I would have ever hoped, as I heal over 100 points of health and knock it out in one hit. I'm no longer low, but the champion does have a Gyarados of his own that's higher level than Lance's. This could be bad. Turn 1 I hit a massive Ice Beam that does over half its health, but here comes the Hyper Beam. Dust is all over the battlefield. The crowd is gasping, but Tentacle emerges through the debris, hurt, but still alive. Another Ice Beam doesn't do the trick, but Gyarados has to recharge, and the last Ice Beam takes us one step further towards the ultimate goal. Arcanine is up next, and is the least of our worries. I send this puppy home on a tidal wave, and we gear up for the final Pokemon. Will Venusaur use Razor Leaf? Will it knock us out? Well, we don't even have to answer that question because Tentacool is fast and we have a massive special stat plus super effective Ice Beam, one hit, knockout, boom, run over. Tentacool has done it in spectacular fashion. And we'll talk briefly about Tentacool now that it's over, but I'd say out of the six or seven runs that I've done, this one felt the best. Outside of the small Brock grind and a dozen or so of Sabrina attempts, there really wasn't any hard walls for Tentacool. Its typing, its stats, its move pool, they were all great for a solo run, and I think it did wonderful. The run ended up being 4 hours, 36 minutes of in-game time, which is fast. Way even faster than Bellsprout that did minimum battles, and that's with us missing the self scope and everything earlier. It was also only one level higher at level 64, and I believe that I leveled up at the very end of the run, so that one really doesn't even count. So this kind of has me reevaluating what I think A tier is. In the Krabby episode, I said that it was B plus, and that A tier should be for minimum battles. But Tentacle was so fantastic, I think we gotta make an exception here. Honestly, if we take into account real life time, it blows Bellsprout out of the water. And why should we judge Tentacle so harshly on minimum battles? but not judge Bellsprout on the real life time and the amount of resets it had while relying on luck based strategies the whole game. Today Tentacool is at the top of the totem pole. I can maybe think of three Pokemon that could dethrone it and I honestly want to get to work and I want to I want to start doing runs for those Pokemon. But one of the commenters, Sad Cat Lynn, if you're watching this, uh, I think I'm going to get started on that Eevee run that you requested. More than likely next week it'll come out. Anyways, that's it. If you've made it this far in the video, I appreciate you a lot. And I'm still having fun making these. 
It would be awesome if these videos somehow picked up views and started gaining some traction and taking off. But after doing these over the course of a couple of months, I don't, I'm not sure I'm seeing it guys. So I can promise at least another month or so of these before I inevitably get burnt out. Anyways, if you have suggestions, let me know. If not, I kind of want to do Poliwag, Staryu, and Ghastly for the pre-evolve runs, and then maybe some Mewtwo, Gengar, possibly a Machamp to see who could be the overall fastest, but I'm not really sure. But that's about it for me guys. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.